This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is WRC8 and our preview or our first look at the title from this year's E3. The title comes to us from Big Ben, and it was one of only a handful of titles that sim racers could actually see at this year's E3. WRC8 is produced by Big Ben, but the game was actually developed by Clioten Games, aka KT Racing who have a very long list of driving games behind them, including WRC 5, 6, 7, and now 8, in addition to TT Isle of Man and V Rally 4. They are also the team behind the upcoming FIA Truck Racing Championship. WRC 8 is actually built on the experience of the previous versions built by Clioton and Big Ben Games. So looking back in time, you had 2015 with WRC 5, 2016 with WRC 6, WRC 7 in 2017, but they've taken a little more time building WRC 8 with its release being two years later for 2019. The latest version of their licensed WRC 8 title is due out September for the PlayStation, Xbox, and also on the PC. For WRC 8, the game maintains its focus or emphasis on the licensed FIA World Rally Championship with many of the same teams, liveries, and drivers as in real life. That means over 50 teams and a variety of small, snorting, turbocharged, all-wheel drive WRC rally cars and the liveries, drivers, and all the things that are associated with that. The game is bigger than ever and has 14 different regions or rallies, and that includes five new regions in this particular version. In total, there are over 100 special stages with a variety of different terrain and road surfaces to challenge drivers. There will also be a selection of WRC2 and junior WRC rally teams to choose from, as well as a selection of historic valleys yet to be determined or named yet. Now with that two year break, Clioton has really pushed things to the max. The game is bigger than ever. The graphics have been pushed and are looking about as good as any driving game I've played. They've added dynamic weather and that can change a stage from identical to a totally new experience when replayed. WRC8 will also have random events out on track to further add realism to the rallying experience. There will also be a focus on car upgrades and team development. And in talking to the developers, I learned there's going to be a lot more focus on car upgrades, building up your team, and a much more enhanced career mode than ever before. Now, Everything we've talked about up till now, it's basically the stuff you'd read on the box. It's the stuff you'd find on the website. It's the stuff that's being blasted all over the internet as they do their media blitz for WRC 8. But at E3, we got to do something special. We got to see it firsthand with our own eyes. We got to feel it and drive it firsthand with our own hands and feet. And we also got to talk to the general public and see their reactions to the game as well, coming from a different perspective than a full-on sim racer. In my experience with WRC8, I was able to drive enough to really increase my optimism for what this title brings. However, this is still a few months before release. It was a limited version of the game, and it's still very much a work-in-progress title. With that said, we are still able to get a really good taste of it. The graphics were downright stunning. There was an incredible feeling of really being in the region and subtle differences beyond just the terrain to remind you of where you were at. The buildings, the machinery, the local trades being represented off the winding track in their very own backyards. Included in the graphics were a variety of different driving camera angles with two different in-car views for the hardcore sim racers. Other factors like smoke, fog, rain, and storms were also stunning and brilliantly recreating rallying life. The sounds were good as well, with good engine sound, good road noise, and that also enhanced the driving experience. I did find it a bit hard to hear my co-driver's pace notes, and that also made it a little hard to put them to use at some times. I did use the icons that were visually giving me the pace notes, and they were more advantageous to me than my co-driver. And then come the physics. And to an extent, I have learned that the physics of the game are hidden behind force feedback, or force feedback is our first sense of physics. 
At first, the Big Ben team had set the sim up with 540 degrees of rotation playing WRC8 on the PC. I found it very hard to catch the car. I felt as though the steering was lagging behind the sim and that it was not well connected to the game. I changed it to 360 degrees of rotation and the game became much more controllable. The timing was better. The match between my wheel and the game was better and I was able to start driving the car with more confidence. That is when I found the overall difficulty of the game to be very difficult. Properly narrow tracks, rutted out sides of the road to pull you off track, and difficult corners being seen for the first time challenged my driving skills and my ability to look far enough ahead to see what was danger. I was constantly having off-track moments or rolling the car and being forced to reset. WRC 8 had a great sense of speed and a through-the-roof intensity that made each stage even more fun for the avid sim racer. But perhaps too much of a sim for the general public. Now WRC 8 is played by something that I'm finding a little too common in a lot of mid-range titles, or maybe even more commonly in multi-platform titles available on the PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, and that being very light force feedback somewhat of a muted feeling, not having that life in the wheel that we've be become accustomed to in many other sim racing titles. Now this is something that I hope gets more attention between now and the release of the game, and I did see a huge difference just going from 540 to 360, so maybe working a little more with saturation, dead zone, and all the other settings in the wheel, we can get more out of it, but it's something that I hope they really do do to finish off the game properly. The stages were short to medium in length and will be somewhere between four and eight minutes in length for the advanced drivers. Despite being short, there were a handful of stages for all 14 regions within the game. This was also accomplished by having the reverse direction variation of each track. Another aspect that I really did enjoy were the newer features such as dynamic weather. A stage that started in clear might finish in the light rain, and when talking to developers, I found out it could get as extreme as a hailstorm, which I did not witness. Another thing I really liked were the random events. At one point, I saw a car broken down on the side of the road, and at another, I actually saw a car rolling, finishing his roll and ending his stage there on the spot. As I mentioned, something else that made this first look special was getting to watch people wait in line for a very long time, well over an hour, to get their first chance or first look at the title. They are obviously blown away by the graphics, by the sounds, and everything they saw and heard waiting in line. Because they waited that whole hour, even if they are not an avid sim racer, it had sucked them in. And driver after driver, I watched as they crashed, flipped, drove off track, went backwards, into the woods, and mostly failed to keep four wheels on the driving surface for the most part. I would say that only 1 in 25 people even remotely had the skills to grasp the job at hand. I watched the other 24 laugh and scream and really enjoy themselves, but I did wonder if the difficulty alone could lead to poor sales. Now this game is no game. Its difficulty alone takes it right into the category of a full-blown sim, and that's going to make it difficult for many drivers. Now my overall impressions of WRC are fairly positive, and I am still hoping for more out of them between now and the release date. As of now, there is no word of any kind of VR support, and that's going to be a deal breaker for some. And I do hope for slightly better force feedback in WRC 8, and I hope in the end it's a step forward from the past. The user interface is clean, and the imagery while picking cars and tracks is appealing. And from what I've heard, the career mode is the best that we've ever seen from them. It's deeper in content, and it's going to be a form formidable opponent to Dirt Rally 2. Now, it was a pleasure working with Big Ben, Clienton, and the WRC 18 at E3. It was a pleasure before my first look, before my first thoughts, to see the public play it, to hear their reactions and what they thought of the title as well. It definitely laid an impression on me on how the public was receiving it. The final version of WRC8 is due out in September and we're likely to be one of the first to get a copy of the title for review. I hope you've enjoyed this first look at WRC8 from E3. We'll keep you up on any news that comes out on the title between now and its full release, but that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to thumbs up, subscribe, tell a friend. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole.
and I'll see you on the track.